All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. So tracing, all right, so obviously there's a couple different types of files that we can trace. So uh, you have your multicolor files, you have your silhouette files. So let's go ahead and bring in just a basic black and white silhouette file. All right, so I have this uh, megaphone here. And you can see right away we can tell this is not a vector file, all right? And the re reason we know that is by all the little the pixelation here on the line. So you can see it's not a perfect straight line. There's a lot of pixelation going on there. So right away that tells me that this is not a vector file, all right? Another way to tell is if I go here to my view or if you're working with a TRW Stone Wizard toolbar, I can also go here to wireframe. And that will tell me a little bit more about this particular design. So right away, it, tells me, it shows me that the outer box here, that's my background. All right, so if I were to send this over to my cutter, what's going to cut right now is just this outline here. All right, notice that the inside is grayed out, so the actual megaphone won't cut out. All it's going to cut out is this box. All right, so when we vectorize an item or an object, what we're doing is now creating cut lines for this image here, for the actual um, part of the design that we want to cut out. So with those cut lines, that cut, those cut lines, when I send my design over to my um, cutting program or my cutter, now that cutting program is going to recognize those cut lines and it's going to create that cut rather than just the box around. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. So again, with the silhouettes, pretty simple. With the black and white images, is not as difficult to trace because there's more, the, the program is seeing those darker areas there and it's able to trace it a lot nicer all right so if you guys don't notice if I click away from my image notice how we have our standard toolbar up here all right so basically all I can do right now is change my workspace all right so with that if I select the image now with the image selected now notice how we have a brand new toolbar that pops up all right so we have edit bitmap now edit bitmap is gonna as you can see right there it tells me it's gonna open and crawl photo paint all right um, that's obviously something that you guys can you know if if you guys haven't installed I would you know you go in there and play around with photo paint if you like um, but it's not something we're gonna use right now all right what we want to use is the trace bitmap here all right but before we get to that trace bitmap there is this bitmap um, drop down menu right up to the top here all right so you can see we have convert to bitmap and some different things here now, the one I want to show you is the mode right here, all right? So the mode right here is pretty cool because let's say we have a, an image that has a little bit more colors to it. You can actually convert into a black and white image so you can actually trace it, all right? So in this case, let me see, because this is black and white already, let me go ahead and bring a different image in here so you guys can see what I mean. So let me bring the baseball in here real quick. So we have this baseball image here, all right? So I want to convert this into a black and white image before I trace it. Let's go to bitmaps, and then we can go right here to mode, and then black and white. All right, so it's supposed to convert to black and white like this. All right, so now what you see, there's no colors, so when I go to trace it, it's going to recognize those darker areas and give it a nicer trace. All right, so real quick, now that I have the base point here, it's a good example that we can use later on. So let's go ahead and try to trace this megaphone out. All right, again, I don't have to go to my bitmaps here and do a... Uh, black and white in this case because it's already black and white all right so let's go ahead and select trace bitmap now this is going to bring some interesting options up so we have the quick trace now the quick trace it's uh, it's pretty unique it actually allows us to whenever we click on quick trace it's just going to use the glass trace method that you worked with so let's say I used um, maybe the center line trace here line drawing then it's going to use that one as the quick trace so whatever you used previously is what's going to be used as the quick trace all right um, then we have the center line trace here, center line, technical illustration, again, not real, not ones that we really mess a lot with in this part of the designing or the tracing. What I want to work with is my outline trace here, all right? So we have a couple different feature or different options here. We have the line art. So a line art, if I click on that, now this is my power trace window here, and you can see we have a couple options. So we have the original design here, and then we also have our um, new design that's here. All right, some important information to take from this from this page right here. We have at the bottom right here, we have the number of curves it has. So this tells me it has four curves. It has 47 nodes. So those nodes, and I can show you here once we uh, complete the trace, those nodes are the ones that I can actually uh, manipulate or work with to be able to adjust the image. So if there's areas that I need to make maybe round off, then I can do that. Um, can't see anything. Okay. What are you not seeing the screen here, Mirafell? 
You should be able to see right now. You should be able to see my Corel Draw screen. Oh, try signing out and signing back in. That should fix your problem. Let me know if you're still having any issues with that. All right. So here, another thing, great thing that we have here is say we have a design with a background. I know we get a lot of questions of how do we get rid of a background. Well, you see right here which gives us the options. Under the options, we have delete original image or remove the background. All right. So if I don't remove the background, notice it gives me the white background. If I hit remove, bam, now it actually removes the background for me. So it automatically removes it. Some of the cool things that we can work with in this power trace is up here at the top where it says preview. We can also do a wireframe overlay, and this is going to show me exactly what's going to cut out. So very similar, Wendy, to the when you're working with the designer edition. All right, so that's kind of the same look that you would get if you're working with the designer edition, the outline like that. So that will show you exactly what's going to be cut. So if I zoom in here, you can see right here, there's a little bit of a hiccup there. You see where there's a little bit of a where we have a little bit of a line there. So when I cut that out, when when we do trace it out, you'll see that that piece right there. Once I group the image, I can take that piece out and delete it, all right? Or we could also change the detail by change the detail right here. So everything you see here, we can adjust the design to make it um, beautiful, excellent. So it works now. So if you're having any issues with the video, guys, just sign on and sign back in. That should fix the issue, all right? So as you can see here, we have the outline trace. Now, we have colors here as well. But in this case, let's go back to my preview. So before, after. Now notice here we have our different colors, all right? So let me show you the colors part when we actually do the baseball, all right? So that's going to give us a lot, a larger number of colors here, and I'll show you how to edit those colors, all right? So let's say this design is ready. We're ready to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and click OK, all right? So once I click OK, and again, because this is a darker image, again, it has a nice dark uh, color to it, it traces a lot nicer, whereas you'll see with this one, it's going to be a little bit tougher to trace than your basic dark image like this, all right? So if you guys are going on the webs on uh, Google and let's say you want to do, you're looking for pause, make sure the pause that you get has a nice white background and then um, maybe colored in black or a dark navy blue, something that's going to stand out and the program's going to be able to recognize all the lines. All right, so here's our new trace. So now if we go to my wireframe, we're going to see the big difference. So you see now, this is my original image up here. All right, you can see we have the box around, but the actual image, the actual object inside the, the PNG file is not traced. So that would not be recognized by my cutter. Whereas right here, notice that we actually have cut lines all around my design right here. All right. So again, that would be for your simple silhouette images. So if you have just an all one color image, this is how it's going to trace. Now you will notice right here, that little piece. That's that piece I was talking to you guys earlier when I first did that, um, the preview in red, all right? So to get rid of that piece, we can do a couple things, all right? First off, let's go ahead and right-click on my design and ungroup it. So when I ungroup it, this is what's going to allow me to actually edit this particular vector file, all right? So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to do ungroup. So now when I ungroup it, also notice how we have where the white was. It's now actually um, an object. So I can go here and change that to pink and then make this one pink as well. So it's actually now two colored ones and I ungroup it, all right? But of course, if you wanted to, you can get rid of the pink and now you have just the megaphone there, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control Z and then Control Z to go back real quick, all right? So now, because I ungrouped it, now these little pieces here are also able, to, I'm also able to go in there and edit those out. So I can go ahead and drag it out and hit Delete or if I wanted to, I can also go ahead and hit Control Z, Control Z. Or I can also go here and select the gray, hold shift, and select the black. So all I'm selecting now is just that, those two parts right there. And we can go up here to weld and weld it together. All right, so you can see it actually welds it together. And the weld feature, if you're using the TRW Stone Wizard, you'll have this toolbar up here and the weld feature is right here. If not, let me go ahead and control Z real quick so you guys can see where it comes up as well. So right up here, you'll also have weld. All right, so once you weld it, this is what we have. So it actually converts into a black. Um, now it's, it's, it's welded together. But notice how we have kind of um, this area right here where it's sticking out a little bit further than it should. So this should be a nice straight line, but it actually has almost kind of a, um, kind of a bump there that we need to get rid of. All right. So that's where, remember earlier when we were talking about the notes, it showed that we had 47 notes down there. 
that's what we're going to work with now to adjust that part right there of this particular design. All right, and same with this part over here. So I can zoom in. Now we have the shape tool right here. So right below our pick tool, we have the shape tool. Select that shape tool and then click on my design. So left click once and what you'll see now is the um, surrounding line right here. You'll see where we have these now orange little squares. All right. And so if I hover over that square, it lights up and it becomes a little bit bigger. So that's my node. All right. Another great thing to look at at the top here. Now we have a whole new, a brand new toolbar up here. All right. So with that toolbar, that's going to allow me to adjust the nodes. It's going to allow me to edit nodes, break the nodes apart, and do everything I need to work with as far as the nodes and the editing part of the nodes is going to be right up here. All right. And you'll also see a lot of those if you right click. You can also find those here. All right. So that's just by me right clicking there. All right. So let's say if I want to create that area right here, I can do a smooth, and it's going to smooth it out for me. So now I can create a curve rather than a straight line. Or because I really don't need that node right there, what I can do is also highlight it or select it and just hit delete. And you can see now it deleted that node. So if I go right here, let's select this one right here and hit delete. So now if I hit that delete, notice it fixes that whole entire side up. So now we've edited that the handle of the megaphone and it looks a lot cleaner now rather than having that bump that we originally had there. Now you see this one right here, even this node right here. I can click on that and get hit delete and now gives me a nice straight line there as well. So there's a lot of times that you have extra nodes in the design that you really don't need there. So once by deleting them, you'll see how it cleans up the design a little bit nicer as well. So right here, hit delete. And now you see where that actually that might work. That might work. Now another thing we can do is we can go in here and grab this node and bring it in as well. And now we have a little bit more of an angle there. All right. I can hit control Z. And now also notice how we have these control point arrows here. If I drag, if I left click and drag those control point arrows, look at that. I can change the whole entire now property of this particular megaphone. All right, so I can go here, grab this control point, and again, I can just adjust it and do some different things with it. But now because I'm in, I've ungrouped it and I'm in that shape tool feature option, now I can go in and edit this design however I like. All right. Now another great thing, let's say we want to do something down here, maybe right here in the middle. So let's say we want to go ahead and add a node in the middle. All right. So right here we're going to add a node so we can maybe change the, the actual design. So I can go here and double click on the line and that's going to create a node. Or I can select the spot that I want to create the node, like right here, click once. And then at the top here we have the plus and minus. So plus is going to add a node, the minus is going to take away a node. All right, we also have some different features up here, like the break curve apart. So if you want to have an opening in your curve here, that's how you would do that. So you can break that. That's going to break two nodes apart. All right, so here, let's hit add, and bam. So that created a new node there. All right, so with that new node, I can go in here and completely now change this design. So there, we can go here and change that if I needed to. So basically, we're using the nodes to, again, change the overall properties of that particular design. All right, so that is working with your basic one color uh, or your black and white image in uh, using your trace bitmap, all right? Anybody have any questions with that? Again, the if you're going to do a simple one color design, just go ahead and you can use the trace bitmap because for the most part, if it's just a black and white image, it's going to come out all right, all right? It's when we're getting into the color designs that it becomes a little more difficult to actually trace them, all right? And that's where we will work a lot with the tracing, fee, uh, the tracing tools and also um, the node editing. That's where we're going to be using a lot of those. All right. So again, anyone have any questions in uh, how we did that one color design there? Beautiful. All right. So the baseball. Let's go ahead and get rid of our designs there. All right. So we have the baseball here. All right. So let me go ahead and just do a quick trace. Let me just do a trace bitmap, and I'm just going to do now a clip art. All right, just a simple clip art. And again, guys, I recommend you guys going in there and checking all the different styles out to see what each one will do for you. But you see what happened here? Not very good. And what happens is the program is now trying to recognize all the different colors. So you see there's a shadow right here. So that shadow, it's recognizing as one color. It's recognizing the darker gray right here as another color. And then you can see it's, it's not very good. All right, very sloppy. What this means is going to be a lot of editing to do after we hit OK. Notice how there's 726, 726 nodes. That is quite a lot of nodes for a 4 by 4 inch design. All right, so again, a lot of editing. So in this case, 
not maybe not the right way to go about things is by tracing it. And another thing you really want to take into a, into account is the quality of image that you're working with. All right, so let's go ahead and hit cancel here because obviously that wasn't going to be traced very well. So let me show you guys real quick with the colors because I actually didn't show you the colors part of it. So real quick with the colors, let's go back here to colors. And the other thing I wanted to show you guys is how to delete these colors. All right, so we can go here and delete those as well. And we can do similarity. We can sort the different colors here depending on what you want to delete the colors by. But you'll see here we have all the reds. All right, so if I select on one of my reds, that's going to show me which design is selected. So you can see right here, that particular burgundy color is just this part of the design. So let's select this one. See, whatever is now um, kind of shaded, that's the part that we're selecting. So if you want to get rid of that particular color, just select the color here, and then I can go right here to my little um, delete and hit delete. Now it's going to delete that part of that design. Same down here. Let's select this one. Now this one it looks like it's right here and yep, just right there. So hit delete. And you can see it deletes it from there. All right, so we're just going to go here, and let's go ahead and select multiple of these. So hold shift, and then I can select the rows there, hit delete, and then you can see it's taking away the red. All right, so let's go here and select all these whites and hit delete. And now all we have left is one white and all red. So you can see by changing the colors and deleting the colors, now we're changing the actual overall clip art. All right, so that's how you would clean it up. But of course, you know, there's easier ways to trace a design like this than having to go through this mess here. All right. I personally like to trace my designs using my tracing tools. All right. So this is what would happen. Hit OK. This is what we have left over. Again, a bunch of mumbo jumbo. But you can see there's a lot of layers to this. All right. So that's where it becomes difficult to trace these different types of uh, PNG images with a lot of colors. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and trace. Um, let's go ahead. And, you know what? I don't want to trace that baseball. Let's do something different. Let's go ahead. I'll bring a basketball in here. I think the basketball is going to look a little bit nicer to uh, showcase because we have a lot more to trace in this design. All right. So here's my basketball. So let's show you the difference between tracing this basketball now and me tracing it by hand. All right. So we'll go ahead and select the basketball. Again, trace bitmap outline. And then we're going to do the, in this case, and, and you'll see I'm just trying to switch it up so you guys can see all the different types of, um, of tracing features. So let's go ahead and do a low quality now. Again, not too bad, but you can see if I go to my uh, wireframe overlay, what we have here is a couple areas where it's actually not finishing up right there, so it's actually not connecting. So I won't even be able to color this design in. Now I can get rid of the detail a little bit, and you can see it actually cleans it up just a tad bit there. And we can keep going to clean it up, but again, these areas are still not enclosed. All right, so let's hit OK and see what happens. So there's my new design. All right, so that's my new design. Now let's go ahead and see what happens when I trace this by hand. All right, so let's get rid of this one. So there's my rip, my new one that we just created. And now we can go ahead and trace this one. So now we're going to get into the actual fun part, which is actual tracing by hand. All right, so let's go ahead and just make this a tad bit bigger and right click and then lock object. All right, so I'm locking it on my screen so that way when I'm going over and tracing, it doesn't move. All right, now notice if I go to my trace tools, which is going to be right here, the fourth option down, we have a few different options here to work with, all right? The freehand tool, two-point line, Bezier, pen, beast line tool, um, the three-point tool, and the polyline tool. All right, now these are all great tools that you can work with. The ones we're going to be focusing on the most today are going to be your beast line and then your Bezier, all right? Now, if you guys have any questions in regards to those tools, we do also have, real quick, let me, um, I'm not going to go off topic with too much off here, but let me just show you one thing that you guys can always relate back to if you guys ever want to know how or what those features do or those tools do for you. All right. So I'm going to go here, the rhinestone world. All right. And all I'm doing is going to our YouTube channel, guys. Oh, by the way, have you guys checked out our new um, video there, the how to start your own business? Pretty cool videos you guys, if you guys haven't checked it out. All right. But. What I want to show you guys is down here we have basic Corel Draw tools from TRW. If you click on that, look at this. We have all these different videos showing you how to work with all those tools. All right, now there are Spanish videos in there for those of you who prefer these videos in Spanish. We also have all those videos in there. So you see, we, right here we have the base, or excuse me, the um, tool base, okay, basics, I guess. 
Uh, we like the R tool. We have our Smart Fill tool, the Intersect, Simplify. But down here, we also have the three-point curve, the two-point curve, the Bezier pen. So all those videos are already there created. And as you can see on the right-hand side here, they're fairly short videos. So it's going to take you straight to that particular um, feature and show you exactly how to utilize it. And then not waste your time because once we show you, that's it. You know, you can go on and move to the next video, to the next tool. Uh, what we wanted to do is just focus on short videos that got to the point and showed you exactly how to utilize those tools all right so those are all there for you they're all free videos just make sure you guys utilize them again they're under that basic corel draw tools from trw playlist all right so again make sure you guys take advantage of those videos that are on the youtube channel they're all free for you guys to take advantage of all right so let's go ahead and get started here now the big thing is with this one we're going to use a couple different tools here obviously we have our lips tool here so there's no need to trace around this circle all right when we already have a circle. So one little quick hint here is going to be holding shift. All right, so if you hold shift, watch what happens. See how this circle is created from the center? If I hold control, you can see it gives me a perfect circle. All right, so shift from the center, control, perfect circle. And that's going to do the same thing with if you're using the rectangle tool. It's going to do the same exact thing for you. It's going to do um, the shift is going to be a from the center is going to create your uh, rectangle or square where control is going to give you a perfect symmetrical object all right so of course what are we going to use in this case we're going to go ahead and use i want to use my i'm going to hold shift when using the ellipse all right so we have the basketball it is locked down so it can't move now i'm going to start the center here hold shift and i'm just going to go ahead and create my circle all right so there's my circle let's go ahead and fit it to size there and then make it just a little bit bigger and again, I'm just going to hold shift while doing this so it fits perfect. All right. Oh, just a little bit smaller. There we go. Perfect. Now, the great thing is also I have at the top here, I want to show you a cool little trick. So at the top here where it says snap to, I have snap to object selected. All right. So once it reaches the edge of the basketball, it's going to snap to it. All right. So I don't even have to worry about where the edges are. In that case, I just drug it close enough to the edge and it just snapped right on there all right so that's how you can make the circle around for your basketball but as you can see right now you can't really see what you're tracing so we can go to our wireframe view to give us a better understanding of what it is that we're working with here all right so there's my new outline that we just created don't worry about the background because the background is actually um, obviously still part of the PNG all right, so now we need to go in there and actually create our line. So we need to create that line, the laces here, or excuse me, not the laces, but our actual outline here. All right, so what are we going to do to that? Here's where we're going to start using our tracing tools. So here is my B-spline tool. All right, B-spline tool is pretty unique. What it's going to allow me to do is, sorry about this, lagging a little bit here from my Corel. So notice how when I create a curve, if I go to my shape tool, it actually gives me almost a preview here. So with that preview, let's say right here, I can click on that preview right here because this is my original line is that yellow line and then we have the blue dotted line here which is my preview line and if I click on any of my nodes here I can go ahead and clamp it to that point so you see that so now instead of having that curve it actually clamped it straight to that to that point all right so that is how that B spline tool works so that's the tool we're going to use because it already gives me a nice rounded edge now we can also use a, the Bezier tool and the Bezier tool pretty cool we can go here and I'm going to left click once and left click again and that creates a line. So I can keep left clicking without having to drag my mouse and it's going to create straight lines like this. All right. Now if I do hold left click, so if I left click down, it actually allows me to create a curve. All right. So in this case, I can go here. Oh, let me go ahead and uh, delete that. So I can go here and then let's go ahead and create it here and then hold down my uh, left click and see how I can create a curve based on that line right there so that allows me to basically create that curve line and also just keep clicking around my screen to create that object all right but you know and I'll, and I'll show you guys how I like to use that that um, Bezier tool as well but I'm gonna go ahead and use the, the B spline tool in this case all right so B spline tool right here and we're just gonna go ahead and now tr create this um, the actual laced look to that basketball here all right so we have the outline now we just need to complete the design so I'm gonna go ahead and start right here and I'm just going to go ahead and left click and you can see I'm just left clicking and it's creating that rounded shape for me. You see that? So again, I'm just going to go around the whole entire design 
and I'm going to click exactly where I see that there is a, a curve. And then now that I reach the, the, my edge right here, I can go ahead and double click, and that's going to finish that line. All right, so now we're going to start right here, and we're going to go again, same exact thing. And don't worry about the thinness of it because I'm going to show you guys how we're going to fix that later. All right. So, again, just kind of create the line. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys, because, honestly, it's it's not a perfect basketball. The, you know, it can change a little bit. It doesn't have to follow that perfect path because you can see that the image is pixelated, so it's not a perfect image anyways. All right. So, now we're going to go ahead and create this one here. So, we're just going to go down the middle right here. Again, just give it a nice rounded look to it, finish it off, and then we just have this one to go off of. So we're going to go here, all right, so I'm just left clicking down a few times here, and there we go, so we're all done. All right, so now let me go ahead and back to my enhanced view, and notice how we can't really see what was done because, again, we had those very thin lines. So let me go ahead and bring this out, and there's my basketball. So what do you guys think? Not too bad, right? Not too bad so far. Not too bad at all, but of course, it's not quite completed. Now, of course, it takes a little bit longer, but as you can see, we have clean lines here. All right, so we do have perfect clean lines right here. All right, so now let's go ahead and finish this design off. So what I can do now is notice how we have our points right here. So I can actually change the point size of my line so I can make it thicker if I wanted to. So I can go here to maybe a 16, and now you can see how thick it is. So now it gives it a nice thick border, but you can see how it still gives that basketball look, even though it wasn't a perfect trace when we did it, but look how nice it looks now, all right? Because I knew once we made it a little bit thicker, it's going to make it look a lot more realistic, all right? So what do you guys think so far? Pretty good, right? All right, so now we still need to do a couple things here, because if I still go, if I go back to my wireframe, notice what happens. Yeah, we made the thickness of the lines bigger, but that's only for the eye. If you actually send it to the cutter, what you'll see is that the line is very thin still. All right, so these lines are still very, very thin. So we still need to do one more thing to be able to actually create it where the lines are this thick right here. All right, so to actually give it that thickness, we want to go right here to where it says convert outline to object. Or if you right click, you can also do the same thing. All right, but we're just going to go again. It's right here in my toolbar. So I'm going to go ahead and select that feature right there. So we're going to click on that. Now, if I go to my wireframe, you see what we have here? Now we have those nice thick lines rather than a thin line. But, of course, we have some areas where we're overlapping, all right? So, obviously, that needs to be fixed. Again, CorelDRAW has a lot of great features to make that process a little bit easier. So, we're going to highlight my design here, and I'm going to go right here to Weld, all right? So, Weld, let's go back to wireframe and show you what welding did. Bam, welded it all together. So, there it is. There's my weld. Now we have our outline for the basketball. Anybody have any questions at all so far? All right, beautiful. Excellent. So now what we need to do is obviously this is a two-color design, but right now it's only showing a one color. So right now all it's going to cut out if I send this to my cutter is going to be the outline. All right, so what do I need to do here? What I want to do is let's go ahead and right-click on my, on my design now. Uh... Teresa, you didn't understand how to make the curves. All right, let me go ahead and go back. Now, you're saying to make the lines thicker. Is that what you're saying, Teresa? To actually make, so it's not actually a thin line, to actually give, give it that thicker look, the the thicker outline look. Curved, not straight. Oh, 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 okay. Now, with the B-spline tool, Teresa, so her question was, didn't understand how to make the curves. Curved, not straight. Now, with the B-spline tool, Teresa, it actually does it for you. So every time I click, it's going to create a curve. Oh, all right. So you'll see here with the B-spline tool, that's kind of the, the, ob the, the main goal of this tool is to create a, uh, like uh, that curve shape for you, whereas the Bezier tool is going to give you that straight line, all right? But, of course, we still have the ability to, if I wanted to later on, go in and actually adjust my design to these control points here, which is going to give it a nice straight line effect to it rather than that curved look to it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I definitely can. So I can actually show you right here. So to make the line thicker, obviously if you're working with a TW Stone Wizard, you would just do an outline, or excuse me, one island to the outside and it's going to create it thicker for you. If you don't have the TW Stone Wizard, we can go up here to our um, different point sizes here and I can change that to let's say 10 
or let's make it a little bit thicker so you can see it. So 24. So you can see how thick it is in this image here. But if I go to wireframe, it's still going to be that little thin line that's going to be cutting, not what we want to cut, which would be this thicker outline. All right. So to convert it to an object, we got to go right here where it says convert outline to object. Or if you don't have the TRW Stone Wizard, it's also going to be under your object drop down menu here. All right, so I'm going to go to convert outline to object, or you can also use control shift, control plus shift plus Q, which is also going to convert it, which is a little bit tricky. So worst case, just go ahead and go here and then just hit left click on that, which now gives us a perfect um, cuttable line now that's a little bit thicker. All right, and you can see we have all these node points, all these nodes right here that we can go in now and adjust to change the actual shape of this object now. So we can go in here and adjust those as we wish. All right, so that was by converting it to outline, or excuse me, converting an outline to an object. All right, so now we're ready to, again, color this design in. Now, Teresa, let me know if that, if that, if uh, if you still have any questions about that B-Spline tool, all right? All right, so now, now we have this image here. All right, so now we need to fill the colors in. There's two ways you can do this, all right? So one way we can do it is we can right click on it and do break curve apart. So what you, ha what you see happens here is now it turns into a black circle. But if I go to wireframe, you can still see the design is there. So all it really did was it created in that full circle is now just a solid. And then we still have our regular image on the back, in the back side, right? So let's go ahead and hit Control Z real quick. So now what I can do is that, let me go ahead and change the color of this circle now. So that's going to change to blue. All right, still, what, what is happening? I still can't see the, the basketball. That's because it's still hidden behind. All right, so let's go ahead and click on my blue, so just on the outline here. And then I'm going to right-click on it, and we're going to go to Order to Back of Page. And there it is. So there's my design now. There's my outline with the colors in the inside. So now we can go in here, and let's say we want to select all the black. So we're going to go ahead and select just the inside here. We'll make that orange. and then we'll make the outline black. And there we go. There's my basketball. So what do you guys think? As far as um, vectorizing, what do you guys think looks nicer? I mean, do you guys like this ball or this ball? So maybe it took a little bit longer to create this one, but honestly, the time you're gonna take to edit this one, this will be way quicker and uh, obviously more efficient. As you can see, it came out pretty good. What do you guys think? Exactly, and I think, uh, I mean, this one right here would be ready to go, where in this case, I still have to edit a lot of these nodes. You can see the lines aren't straight, where in this case, we have perfect lines. Um, there's going to be no issues cutting this design at all, all right? Thank you, guys. Way easier, exactly. And again, it, all it takes is to take a little bit extra time and focusing on the actual designing to be able to create a very good-looking design. So, yeah, anybody can go in there and trace this like this and try to drop it on a shirt, and you know, they might like it, but in reality, the time that you take on actually creating and tracing that design out, it's going to make you look a lot better because they're going to see the time and effort that was put into the design. Oh, no worries, no worries. So, to bring that back, so um, the question was, how did you get that circle to the back? So, let's go back a few times here. All right, so, again, that's on the, in the front right now. Now, if you guys are working with the TRW Stone Wizard, let me go ahead and bring in the wizard out so I can show you the different ways to do that. All right, under the edit tab in the wizard, we have to front, to back. So here we can do to back, and then it brings it to the back of the screen. All right, we can also do here. If you do it to the front, obviously, whatever's in the back is going to go to the front of the page. So that's one way to do it if you have the TRW Stone Wizard. The other way to do it is I can click on the blue circle here, right-click on it, and then go order to the back of page. All right, so that's another way. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and go back. So the question actually was, where did the circle come from? Which is a great question. So right now, again, we have this object here. All right, so as you can see, it's a single color. If I go to my wireframe, only thing that's going to cut out right now is this outline. All right, because right now it's, we're telling the, the, the cutter that this is a single color design. The shirt's going to be showing through. All right, so what we need to do to convert it into a two color design this is the first way to do it, is right-click on my design and hit Break Curve Apart. All right, or up here as well, you can break the curve apart up there. So I'm going to left-click here and hit Break Curve Apart, which now gives me 
this circle, which is the outline, and then the actual fill in the inside here. All right, so let me go ahead and hit Control Z, or I actually go back real quick. Oh, did I go one too many? Looks like my uh, Corel is uh, slowing on me here. So now I can go ahead and change the color there, and then that's it. Because I already had it to the back, that's all we had to do. No problem. Uh, we will be able to get a recording of this. I missed it. Yes, yes, Patty. Hey, Patty, glad you could make it. Actually, Patty was in here earlier today. We were uh, going over some things. So, uh, Patty, thank you for coming by. Um, and I am recording this, so you guys can actually take a look at this later on as well. Um, Patty, real quick, one thing I do want you to see is under um, Patty's – Patty actually did not realize that we had this – very very useful um, tool here so under the website guys if you guys uh, if you guys have any questions where our videos are under the tutorials tab right here there's a drop down menu and you can see a lot of the different categories of videos that we have all right so we do there's a lot more videos in there for you guys to be able to watch so if you don't want to focus just on Corel draw videos hey there's a lot more production process there's sticky flock heat pressing all sorts of videos to keep you entertained and uh, obviously give you some valuable knowledge um, and also under the, the Rhinestone World um, YouTube channel, Patty, we also have the playlists. And if you go to this playlist, you'll see the basic CorelDRAW tools. And that's going to show you a lot of the tools that um, are going to be used quite frequently as well. All right. All right. So that is the basketball. So what do you guys think? Not too bad, right? Pretty simple. All right. So now I want to show you the second way to be able to fill it in. All right. So let's say you don't want to break the curve apart and you want to just give it a quick uh, fill. Um, let's say maybe you're working with you want to fill the inside with rhinestones in that case we can use use the right here We have the smart fill tool All right, so the smart fill tool and if you're working with the x6 You'll see the smart fill tool is a little bit higher up in the toolbar But if you left click on there, so we have pink selected Let's go ahead and just left click on our areas here and you can see it's just coloring it in for me And that's it bam that, now we have our two color design ready to go not bad So two ways to go about it. you can do a more smart fill now, Smart Fill is also great if you have, um, let's say you've bought a vector file that has openings like this. That's another great way to go about it. You can just Smart Fill it, and there you go. So you're all set there. All right, so two ways to actually fill that design in. All right, anybody have any questions on um, how to do the B-Spline tool, how to bring in, uh, how to use your lips to be able to create the trace of a, of a ball or a design? Perfect. All right. So let me go ahead and show you guys how we can work with the Bezier tool now. All right. So the Bezier tool is actually pretty cool. It's one that I started using a lot more of. It's, um, it allows you to do a lot, actually. It really does. So let me go ahead and bring in um, let me go ahead and bring in this design real quick. So this is a little bit nicer design. We have um, – not nicer, but it's a little bit of uh, just more straight lines, straightforward design. So obviously, Vita is a pretty popular brand name out there. Um, obviously, I don't recommend – using any of these uh, images obviously this is for the knowledge part of it um, but this design right here all right so we have this design our customer uh, sends this over to us and tells us that they want to create this particular design in um, uh, let's say in vector or excuse me in in um, HTV vinyl all right so all we need from this all we need to extract from this is the actual Vita name there all right Patty, yes, Avita was your suggestion, exactly, and that's why I brought it up here. <laughs> um, so I did want to show you guys real quick here. So we have Avita here that we want to trace out, all right? So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens if I left-click on here and I go to Trace Bitmap. And now this is another good one because before – oh, now I'm, now I'm being corrected how to say it. I am so sorry if I said that incorrect. <laughs> oh, man, should have brought something else that I could probably say it a little bit easier, huh? Um, all right, so with this, yeah, it's a black and white image, but guess what? We have a lot of sharp corners here, and it's using text, which text does not translate over very well when you're doing the trace bitmap. All right, so let's go ahead and just do a low-quality image real quick and see what we're going to get. So there it is. Let's go ahead and bring this out, and, you know, it didn't come out horrible. It actually didn't come out too bad, but you can see the points aren't sharp. Um, this one's actually not bad. This one came out pretty good. But again, there's some areas here where it just didn't come out too clean. There's my uh, there's my uh, E right there. Not too clean either. So again, there's going to be a lot of editing to do here. So yeah, you got away with it because you were able to do a trace bitmap and then bring it in. But there's still a lot that needs to be done. All right, so let's go ahead and use one of our tracing tools to complete this process here. All right, so right click on my design here and we're going to go ahead and lock it to my screen so I can't move it. Let's go here to my wireframe so I can see what I'm working with rather than having to 
create this in a black outline and then not be able to see where I'm going with the wireframe it allows me to see a lot better what I'm actually creating so now we can go ahead and get started let's go ahead and go over my my uh, Bezier tool and get started here so a uh, couple things to uh, know if you uh, again if you left click down while you click while you make your next your next click it's gonna give me kind of the the rounded um, more of a curved shape if I click here see how it keeps going so that's by holding down left click all right so let's go ahead and um, go here and start my design so let's just start off right here so I'm gonna go ahead and left click once and then left click up here so there it is perfect straight line all right let's go ahead and click here and then we'll click here and then at the top here so all I'm doing is just left clicking left click and left clicking we're gonna go and left click here and then just finish this off all right so there it is that's the first part now we have the circles here don't worry about that we don't need that for right now now I'm gonna go ahead and go to the E here all right the reason for that is because I already have the V already created and this A already created so why am I gonna duplicate and why am I gonna recreate that if it's already made all right so leave that for for now and let's go ahead and focus on our E and the D here all right so let's go here now of course we can always find a font that looks similar to this as well and use it but again that would defeat the purpose of us trying to trace and show you that process all right so again still with my bezier tool let's go ahead and start here oh let's go ahead and select it and we're going to start right here and we're going to go right to the bottom here so straight line we're going to go here straight line another straight line click there click there here and again, I'm just left clicking away, nothing crazy. And you can get a little bit faster once you get a little bit more comfortable with it and finish it off there. All right, so now we're ready for the D part. So we're gonna go here. And again, left click, left click. Now here's where we're gonna get a little bit crazy. So watch here. So I'm gonna hold down left click and now we can go ahead and adjust that part of the design there. So left click down, we're gonna do the same thing right here. And notice because I'm holding left click, it's just creating that rounded shape for me. So I can go here and perfect. So you can see we're just creating that shape of that design. And we can just move along. And then don't worry about that. We can fix that later. We're going to go here and just make that straight there. All right. So this can all be fixed later. So don't worry about that part. And then we just need to create this part of it. So I'm going to go back and go to my B-spline tool just because I like to work with B-spline tool a little bit better when we're working with uh, with the different um, curves like this because I think it just makes it look a little bit cleaner. All right, so we're going to go here and just trace this out. All right, so go ahead and finish it off. Now notice right now it doesn't look like much, right? But you can see we have these nodes that I've created that I know when I fill that in, when I click on my control points here, so if I click on the one right up here to the top left, I can go here and clamp that. I can go down here, select this one as well, clamp that one, clamp that one down, and that's it. So that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and click away from it. Now let's go ahead and fix this up. So I can double click on here, and actually, let me go ahead and drop a node right here so we can actually make it a little bit rounder. There we go. Make another one right here, and there we go. There we go. Delete that one. Perfect. So that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and click away now. Oh, you know what we forgot right here? We need to fix that area up. So let's go here and just move this up a little bit. And there we go. We're all completed there. So now we have the first day completed. We got the E and the D completed. All right. So now what we need to do, let's go ahead and finish off the little circles here. So let's go to our ellipse tool again. And we're just going to go ahead and hold shift and then create our circle. Oh. All right, perfect. And just drop that right in there. And there we go. So there's that part of the design. So now let's go back to my enhanced view and let's right click on this. Actually, you know what? Let me go ahead here. And because I know that's just that part of it, I can draw, I can drag it down and right click to copy it. All right. So now I've copied that design there. Now I can also go to the wizard here and do a copy selected if I wanted to. But of course, we're just working in Corel today. So I just want to show you this part of it. All right. So now let's go ahead and duplicate this one more time. So here, bam, 
and let's get rid of that circle. All right, so this one, I can go here. Let's go ahead and group it. So right click, and we're going to go to, um, uh, do I have the group up? Yep, right here, group. So we're going to group that together. And then we're going to go ahead and just drop this one right here where the V is. So at the top here, notice if I click away from it, we don't have the option here. But if I select it now, notice how we have the mirror tools here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and mirror it horizontally. Now I can just go here and drop that right there. Perfect. And again, it doesn't have to be completely perfect, but there it is. And now we're going to go here and drop this one right here. And that's it. So let's go ahead and unlock my original image. So the black background there, I'm just going to right click and hit on unlock, pull this away, and there's my design. All right, so let's go ahead and highlight it, turn it into black. Now you notice right here, we just need to fix this area up right here. And to do that, we're going to select the D and just hit a combine. So hit combine right up here, and that's it. There we go. So there is your new logo. Bam. So what do you guys think? With that uh, Bezier tool, notice how we have these nice sharp corners here. Same thing here. It's all perfect. Notice how everything turned out exactly how we wanted. Now, there is a couple hiccups here, so let's go ahead and hit here. And I'm just going to delete that one, make it look a little bit nicer. Same with this one. And there we go. So that's it. Completed that part of it, and our design is completed. So what do you guys think? As far as tracing it, what do you, what do you guys think look a little bit um, a little bit nicer? Let me go ahead and trace it so you guys can see what it looked like before. All right, so we have this design. So very close, but hey, I still think uh, the straight lines look a little bit nicer. So you see where this one is right here, kind of uh, a little bit off. This is a perfect straight line there. So you can see there's a lot of detail that is missed when you trace it by trace bitmap than when you do it by hand. All right, so there would be your finished product by hand, and then you have the one that we did here um, with the trace bitmap tool. So let's turn that green for right now. And ungroup it so you guys can see the actual, what it's going to look like, like this. Looks like that already got broken apart. So there we go. So that is, and you can see right here where the E is. You can see where there's some, uh, the lines right there. So again, trace bitmap, you can get away in this case with it, but I wanted to show you exactly how clean the lines look when you actually trace it yourself.